Fashion is so much more than just we wear. It's a reflection of who we are and the world we live in. As fast fashion dominates the industry, offering quick trends at very low prices, it also brings ethical dilemmas that challenges our values and forces us to ask who bears the cost of boycotting fast fashion. In this video, we will explore how people use fashion to construct and communicate their identities, the current onslaught of fast fashion, and how it has contributed to a lot of ethical concerns from labor exploitation to environmental degradation. So before we get started, I am Elle and welcome back to my Ethical Fashion YouTube channel. If you're new here, I upload every week, so feel free to subscribe and turn on your post notifications. So yes, let's get into fashion's evolving role in society. So historically, fashion has been a way of projecting one's identity and social status. That's just a reality. So what people wear really conveys meaning and acts as a form of non-verbal communication to the world around them to reflect a lot of things like social standing, our lifestyle, and personal beliefs. In the past, fashion trends followed a very seasonal rhythm with new collections showcased twice a year. Yet this has sadly changed when our fashion landscape moved to the race to the bottom, meaning brands are racing to cut costs to make more profit. Now fast fashions look like Zara, H&M, and Shein who drop new styles weekly to create a constant demand for new micro trend and an appetite for novelty by having us keep up with these rapid trend cycles and this has really affected our relationship with fashion consumption and our personal identity and I do want to note that what was considered fashion in the past could only be accessed by the upper slash upper middle class who had money to buy popular imported items but now fashion brands provide more price ranges because of fast fashion this has made clothing more accessible for lower income individuals than ever Ever before, which has been termed the democratization of fashion. So the perks of modern fashion are many. Don't get me wrong, okay? It allows us to express our identities, our preferences through ever-changing styles, but it does come at a high cost despite the low price. So the problem with fast fashion, fast fashion's business model is built on producing high volumes of clothing at very low cost. This model came to be after the industry created highly flexible supply chain processes with short production and distribution lead times that allow brands to respond swiftly. Yet fast fashion depends on exploiting labor and exploiting natural resources, often in developing countries where regulations and protections are limited. I actually delved into this problem in a past video and how much I hate fast fashion because of it. So if you want to know the nitty gritty details, please get into that video. The link will be in my description. So okay, the dilemma of boycotting. Do we boycott or do we not boycott? This is the point of the video. So boycotting fast fashion may seem like an obvious choice in the face of all these issues. However, the implications of such a decision are very complex and very far-reaching. And so the decision to boycott fast fashion can actually be framed as a very complex ethical exploration against things like exploitative labor practices, environmental harm, and unsustainable production methods. And that's why I'm here to help you and to further clarify whether boycotting makes sense for you and for your lifestyle. And so I do want to hone in on the fact that ethics surrounding boycotts are far from straightforward. While we may intend to reject negative impacts of the fashion industry, such actions can actually have unintended consequences and often immediate effects. So I'm going to take a minute to explore the economic impact of boycotting fast fashion and how the decision can be impacted by the lack of supply chain transparency and access to sustainable alternatives. So the economic impacts of boycotting. So to start, many reports have shown that garment workers prefer to face exploitative working conditions versus having no job at all. And unfortunately, the economic structure of many countries where fast fashion is made does not offer any other job alternatives. So boycotting fast fashion could inadvertently harm garment workers, but fashion workers across the industry because we would reduce the demand and probably cause factories and jobs to cease in its existence, which can lead to mass unemployment and poverty. Refreshing or reducing capacities. And what we could do instead of boycotting fast fashion is a very good question and I am hopeful of the options we can embrace for a better fashion industry when we come together and improve, you know, economic conditions and labor rights to start. And I do want to point out that boycotting can make things worse though when there are no solutions, when there are no alternatives being presented to those local areas and it can actually end up hurting garment workers. 
it's just not a question of 10 or 20 people. It's a question of millions of workers. So brands must be held responsible for how they behave. And this is not right what, what has happened so far. They should have a costing and a calculation where they're able to pay workers a living wage and also make sure that they are contributing or helping factories to set up uh, an unemployment and yet, this is not to say that we should rationalize and justify their exploitation as tolerable when there is many legislation that could basically make things better, but right now it's just normalized. Their torture working conditions are just accepted based on these very toxic contracts. And I do want to say that if we do stay complacent, we also would be perpetuating a form of casual racism or ethnocentrism where those in wealthier nations view people in poorer countries as inherently different or less worthy of the the same rights as we do, these subtle biases can subconsciously reinforce the susceptibility of exploitative practices in our minds, making it easier to, you know, continue purchasing fast fashion despite these ethical concerns. So just because we don't see what garment workers are going through or even know their names, it doesn't mean we should subdue our need to take action for them. And this can be hard though when we want to focus on what feels right and what feels good for us based on our own personal needs and desires. So now we're going to get into supply chain transparency because this is another challenging part of boycotting fast fashion. There is a supreme lack of transparency in fashion supply chains. It's often difficult for us to determine which brands are truly ethical and which are engaging in greenwashing, which is when they market themselves as sustainable without implementing any meaningful change. So for example, fast fashion fashion brands have launched eco-friendly lines in the past, but these collections are often only a representation of a small fraction of their overall business model. And yet these collections create more demand for fast fashion consumption and their claims are not even backed up with anything. That like, There is no proof, there is no data to say they're actually sustainable collections. I've actually explored whether sustainable fashion is really sustainable in the past YouTube videos. So if you want to watch that too, it'll also be in the description so you can learn more. But the lack of transparency also raises questions about our ethical consumption and personal responsibility alongside the need for systemic change. So let's get into it. The ethical consumption and personal responsibility element is super important because our choices can really drive some change, but ethical consumption is inherently tied to our privilege. Not everyone can afford to buy from sustainable brands, which tend to be more expensive, not gonna lie. And moreover, the lore of fast fashion, which are affordable pieces, are easily accessible and are really trendy, make it difficult for us to resist sometimes. I have in the past, not gonna lie. And this makes our personal sense of responsibility a very nuanced and complex process. It's a journey that's honestly tied to our class, our privilege, our sense of self-fulfillment. And yeah, I just want us to shift though, the focus is systemic change because we really need to consider how to push for systemic this change. We shouldn't blame ourselves for the problems because we didn't create the problems. We were just consumers trapped in fast fashion. We didn't create the demand despite how brand want to blame us for it and systemic change systemic issues sound so big and scary but honestly it could look like us pushing for stricter environmental regulations and supply chain transparency initiatives in the industry france has approved a historic bill banning fast fashion this would affect huge companies such as sheen and timu as well as popular brands like zara and h&m the bill will prohibit fast fashion companies from advertising and from next year a surcharge of five euros will be applied to each clothing item and by boycott fast fashion it could be a good first step in stating our disagreement of what's happening in the industry and we can do this we can boycott while still asking ourselves how we can refuse and reject fast fashion and create the world we live in through legislation and other initiatives and so I also want to navigate the ethical purchasing gap when we're aware of a problem associated with fast fashion it can still be a disconnect between our values and our actions and I'm just saying this because us as humans are imperfect. We hold a lot of conflicting values in our head and in our heart, which influence our fashion related decisions. For example, a person may advocate for fair labor practices and environmental sustainability, but still buy from Shein due to social pressures, convenience, or financial constraints. And this inconsistency highlights the needs and the challenges around ethical consumption, and also how we need to close the gaps between intention and action. I honestly mentioned this to illustrate 
that we're all on a journey. We shouldn't shame each other for not being able to boycott fast fashion and that we can still be imperfect and inconsistent despite what we say we care about. So it's never too late to boycott um, even if you do buy fast fashion. I also want to mention that personal values do play a significant role in this whole process. It shapes our behaviors even when they're not always consistent or rational. This all leads to possible alternatives to fast fashion. Given the context, we have the privilege to decide whether we want to boycott fast fashion and support ethical fashion based on our values and lifestyle. So here are some alternatives to fast fashion. First, you can practice conscious consumption. So you can try to reduce the frequency of clothing purchases and choose more quality pieces versus the quantity. And you can also consider in investing in pieces that you'll wear for years to come rather than just trend-driven items that quickly fall out of style. And you can also engage in clothing swaps and secondhand shopping. So thrift stores, vintage shops, and clothing swaps are such a great way to find stylish pieces without supporting fast fashion. So consider this approach to extend the life of garments and to reduce waste. You can also advocate for policy change, so push for legislation that improves labor conditions and environmental standards in the fashion industry. You can try supporting organizations that work towards these goals to further amplify their impact. And you can also demand transparency, so you can ask brands about their supply chains and labor practices. Our consumer pressure honestly can incentivize companies to disclose more information about where and how the products are made. And yeah, to close off this video, the key to ethical fashion honestly is coming together as a collective to push brands and policymakers and everyone else to address labor and environmental concerns in the fashion industry. We really need to consider who we are and how we're affecting others with harmful behaviors and to support people and style. And sadly, boycotting fast fashion will not end all the issues in the fashion industry, yet it is a way to start our journey. And yeah, I would just say weigh your options, know your values, and let's push for a combination of conscious consumerism, activism, and policy reform, which could really pave the way for a more ethical and sustainable fashion future. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and turn on your post notifications. Again, I upload weekly. And until the next one, peace and love. Oh, bye.